Watch in this video how you can debug your, the source code of your program in PyCharm. First, we will look at what debugging is all about. When programming, there are three kinds of programming errors. The first one is the compiler-generated error or syntax error. The second one is the runtime error that occurs during code execution. And the third one is the logical error or semantic error. If, if PyCharm encounters any errors, they are immediately reported in the following ways. The erroneous code is underlined with the red curvy line. If you hover your mouse pointer over this curvy line, the detailed information about the error appears at the tooltip. The file name in the editor tab is also underlined with the red curvy line. Moreover, the file in the project tool window and even the parent directory are also underlined. An error marker appears in the right-hand margin. When you hover your mouse pointer over an error marker, a speech bubble appears containing detailed information about the error. The box on top of the right-hand margin shows aggregated information about the entire file and is color-coded. Green means that everything is okay, yellow means some problems and warnings, and red means serious errors. The level of inspections can be adapted at the very bottom of the PyCharm window. You can see Hector the inspector. He is responsible for inspecting the code. If you click on Hector, you will see the pop-up window with the highlighting level slider. You can move the slider to the left if you only want syntax highlighting or if you want no inspection at all. Your editing will become faster but less comfortable. We now consider briefly each of these kinds of error. A compiler generated error or syntax error occurs when the instruction or the program contains a syntax error. The interpreter can only execute syntactically correct programs. For example, unbalanced brackets or incorrect indentation result in a syntax error. In the PyCharm editor and the Python console, a syntax error is indicated by a red curvy line. In an interactive session, you will see the compilation error invalid syntax appear with this instruction. In this case, the incorrect syntax can be traced back to the unbalanced parentheses. A second kind of error is the error during code execution, a runtime error. This only occurs when an incorrect instruction is executed. The program stops running and information about the state of the program is displayed. An example of a runtime error is division by zero. In the PyCharm editor, this error will not be displayed in the Python console until the program is executed. For example, in this uh, interactive session, you get a runtime error, zero division error. A third kind of error is the logical error or semantic error. In this case, the program is executed without any problems, but does not behave as expected. This kind of error is, therefore, more difficult to detect. Indeed, in order to solve logical errors, you must try to figure out, based on the observed result, what the program is doing internally. And that is where the debugger comes in. We will demonstrate these three kinds of errors in the video. Watch the sum of integers program again. In this case, the user should supply two integers and the program should calculate a sum and display the result. We see the previously developed program in the editor window. Hector the inspector indicates that there are serious errors in the code. A curvy line appears in the code with the print instruction, suggesting there is a syntax error. If, however, you hover the mouse pointer over this curvy line, the detailed information about the error appears at the tooltip. The print instruction is indented, although this is not allowed here. 
we correct our mistake, which gives us a syntactically correct program. We execute the code. The first instruction is executed and prompts us for a first number. The second instruction is executed. It prompts for a second number. The sum is now calculated and printed. However, the result is not what we expected, but since there are no syntax errors indicated, we cannot immediately detect a problem in our program. There is no runtime error, the program is not interrupted by an incorrect instruction, so this must be a logical error. Using the debugger, you can walk through the program step by step and examine the values of the variables at every step. How do we go about this? First, we add one or more breakpoints to the code. Click on the left-hand margin on the line you want to explore. In the debug mode, the program will be executed up to the first breakpoint. From here, we can walk through the instructions and examine the contents of the variables for every step. To start the debugger for this script, select Debug Sum in the context menu. A debug tool window will open and all the information about debugging of the script can be found in the different tabs. The console on the right contains the debugger messages and the output of the script. In the variables tab, we can see a number of special variables. These are preceded and followed by two underscores. These variables created by Python can be ignored when we debug our own exercise. By pressing F9 or clicking on this symbol, the program will be executed up to the first breakpoint. All the subsequent instructions can be executed one by one by pressing F8. If you start a debugging by pressing F8, the consecutive instructions will be executed one by one from the first line by pressing F8 each time. We start the debug session and the program is executed up to the first breakpoint. In the console, we enter a first number. Then we enter a second number. As you can see, the program carries out every instruction one by one. And in the variables window, you can see all the variables and their ver values used so far. The variable x has been given the value 22. You can see this here as well. And the val variable y has the value 44. Both are saved as string. Meanwhile, the program also calculates the sum, saved it in the variable total. This variable has now the value 2222 and is saved as a string. So, in fact, we made a concatenation of two strings. Both strings are stuck together. Our code contains a typing error. We want to add x and y. However, Python did not register it as a syntax error because no unknown variables were used to determine the sum. We end this debug session and adjust the code, total is now given values x plus y. We debug again by entering the first digit 55 and then f8, the second digit 22. The program executes the instructions one by one. The sum of x and y is calculated and in the variables window we see the values of x, y and 
total. Variable x has been given the value 55 as a string and y has the value 22 and is also saved as a string. Total is the concatenation of x and y and is saved as a string. During debugging, the current content of the variables is also displayed in the editor window. By hovering over the variable in the editor, we can see the current value of the variable as well. We end this debug session. However, in the current exercise, the user should supply two integers and the program should calculate their sum. So the values of x and y must be saved as integers. We add the code to convert each of these variables to an integer and debug again. So x is int of x and y is int of y. Okay, we start the debugging again and Enter the first term, 44. This value is saved as a string. You can see this here. When performing the next instruction, we enter the value for the y. The second term is red, 88 and stored in the variable y as a string. By pressing F8, we go to the next instruction. The next instruction converts the string into an int and stores the value of 44 in x, that is now an int. Pressing F8 brings us to the next instruction. The value 88 is converted into an integer and stored in the variable y. In the final step, the program calculates the sum of the two variables and we obtain an integer with a value of 132. By pressing F8, we jump to the next instruction and the result is printed. The debug session is complete. By going through the program's code step by step and by tracking the content of the variables, we have been able to correct the errors in our code. We will now simulate a runtime error in our program. When we run our code again, we enter 12 as a first value and the letter A as the second value. This gives us a runtime error. It is reported that on line 5 in the program an error occurred. The letter A is an invalid argument for the int function. The error is not detected until the program is run, so this is a runtime error. This is the end of this video, in which we demonstrate how to debug the source code of a simple program in PyCharm.